I almost always use the round side of my router base when I use it with a straight edge. And in almost every video, I see a comment that says I would get better results if I used the flat side instead. In a recent video, I showed a clever little trick for making perfect router joinery without buying a fancy tool or making a jig or an extensive layout. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video for those that want to check it out. But I saw this statement come up again in the comments. Now there's actually a really good reason why I almost always use the round side of the base. I made a video discussing this a few years back, but I figured it was time for a refresher and I now have a theory for why that flat side even exists. Using the flat side of the base, if you adjust your grip or body position and twist the router ever so slightly, the bit can be pulled farther away from the straight edge than intended and ruin your cut. If you use the round side of the base, as long as the sub base is centered to the bit, you can twist and turn and adjust all you want and the bit will continue to stay the same distance from the straight edge. Now you'll notice that I said if the sub base, this part right here, is centered to the bit. This is a key component that a lot of people overlook and there's a couple ways that we can check and adjust this if necessary. One way is to install a router bit with a clean bearing and then measure from said bearing to several different spots on the round portion of the base. If it is off, simply loosen the screws that secure the sub base to the router, make any necessary adjustments, and then retighten the screws. Sometimes the sub base can move when you retighten the screws, so just make sure to double check your measurements. Another way would be to install a chamfer bit, loosen the screws, and then lower the router base plate until the edges of the base plate center hole just come in contact with the cutters. There are only two cutters on the bit, so you'll have to rotate the bit a few times and check again. Once it's barely touching the same all the way around, retighten the screws. A third option is to replace the factory pan head screws with screws with a tapered head. The taper will self-center the holes in the sub base with the holes in the base of the body and hopefully bring the sub base to center along with it. Now there's going to be at least one person that says centering the sub base only works if it's milled to a perfect circle and technically speaking I mean they're not wrong but practically speaking this is one of those few times when close really is Good enough. As long as you're using the round side of the base, the amount that the bit will stray, even if the sub base is ever so slightly out of round, will probably not even be enough to measure. I centered the sub base on my Bosch a couple of years ago, and I believe I made a centering cone to center this one, but there are some manufacturers that do make centering cones specifically for this purpose. I'll link a couple of the more popular ones in the video description if you wanna check them out. So why do they make base plates with a flat side to begin with, if the round side is so much better? In the case of my DeWalt, I believe it's just another place to hold the tool for stability and control, especially for intricate work. As for other fixed bases, I have no idea why they do it. But you'll notice that pretty much all plunge bases have at least one flat side. And the reason all comes back to the twisting scenario I talked about earlier. As long as the flat side is held firmly against the straight edge when you plunge, it will act as a brace and reduce the rotating effect that happens when the bit enters the material. Or all the manufacturers have gotten together and purposely made routers all sorts of different ways just to keep us guessing. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching as always. We'll see you in the next video.